this time on Panasia, we're on the island of Penang. Join me as I sample the best of Malaysia. We'll visit a nearby fishing village, visit a beautiful Buddhist temple, and cook an amazing lobster feast. I'm in Georgetown on the island of Penang in Malaysia. Hi, I'm Sean Richards. Locals refer to Penang as the Pearl of the Orient. And the island sits in between the most populated nations in Asia, in between India, China, and Indonesia. Add to this the fact that it's one of the oldest British settlements in Malaysia, and you've got a cultural crossroads. But before we explore, let's see where Penang lies. Spreading across Southeast Asia, Malaysia shares borders with Thailand, Indonesia, and tiny Brunei. It claims a third of the island of Borneo and the southern part of the Great Peninsula along the Strait of Malacca. Penang is an island just off Malaysia's northwest coast in the Andaman Sea. Its capital is Georgetown. Penang effortlessly combines the beauty of its natural surroundings with a rich cultural heritage and a great love of food. We'll sample one of the local favorites called Assam Laksa. We'll visit a very colorful butterfly farm. We'll experiment with the king of all tropical fruits. And we'll cook a sumptuous meal, lobster, Penang style. Georgetown's fishing port was once a landing point for British traders. In the 18th century, Francis Light gave military assistance to a local sultan in return for the uninhabited island. Today, Victorian buildings and Chinese clan houses, churches and Buddhist temples sit side by side in the sun. But Georgetown, with its Chinese character, is an Asian city through and through. Penang is above all else an island paradise. The waters of the Indian Ocean are warm and gentle when it's not monsoon season. Resorts offer surf and sunshine, unspoiled beaches, sparkling sea air, and lots to do. The toughest decision I'll make here is what to try first. I'm meeting Chef Injun at a nearby fishing village to buy the main ingredient for tonight's meal, lobster. One of my all-time favorites. I think I see the boat coming now. Uh -huh. yeah? yeah, is that him? Coming. Excellent. I wonder how many he has. <laughs> Earlier, we sent the fisherman out to test his luck and check his traps. Hi there. Hi. <laughs> Got our lobsters? Yeah. Okay. Let's see how many he has. Oh, wow, they're beautiful. They're huge. They look big to me. Are these, are these large lobsters? Are these medium? Medium? Oh, wow, look at the tail flipping. Yeah. Lobster is just so fabulous. Mm -hmm. As long as it's fresh. <laughs> as long as it's fresh, exactly, and these are. You can see we have two different kinds of lobster here. Mm -hmm. This one has huge claws, yeah. and this one doesn't. Is there, do you eat the meat in the legs? Is there much meat in there? No, most, you take it from the loin. Oh, you take it from the loin, yeah. okay. So this is the part that we'll be cooking. Yes. Looks like a nice big chunk of meat. Well, while they're still nice and fresh, let's get them back to the cafe so we can start cooking. Okay. Okay? Okay. Now that I'm all geared up for lobster, I've got to have a snack to tie me over until dinner. Luckily, there's no shortage of fabulous food in Penang. Georgetown streets are filled with mouth-watering aromas of Penang Nonya cuisine, a blend of Chinese and Malay influences. I already know what I'm having. I hear it's the most popular dish around. 
This is Assam Laksa, which some people say is Penang's greatest contribution to the culinary world. Of course, I have to try one. Assam Laksa starts with coarse rice noodles layered into a bowl. Then comes Bunga Katang onion, fresh and leafy green Assam, Malaysia's answer to mint. Mmm. Next, a hot, sour-based fish soup is poured over top. The soup is garnished with thick black fish paste and sprinkled with sliced chilies, cucumber, and pineapple. Spicy, sour, and sweet, all in one dish. That is fishy. But the pineapple and the mint are lovely complements to the dish. It really freshens it up. It's quite delicious, though, and I can understand why it's sold on almost every street corner in Penang. Up next on Panasia, Malaysia's fluttering beauties. The next stop on my journey through Penang is a butterfly farm where I'm meeting Mr. Chin, the resident biologist. Inside, the butterflies are holding a beauty pageant. I seem to have stepped in on the talent competition, and there's a lot going around. In the garden. Three to four thousand yeah. inside yeah. here. But it consists of 80 to 120 species. 80 to 120 yeah. species. Is that for all of Malaysia or just in Penang? So they are all Malaysia. All throughout Malaysia. The, whole, the true peninsula Malaysia. Yeah. It's a good thing that butterflies are quiet because it would be really noisy in here if they weren't. <laughs> A gorgeous waterfall. Yeah. <laughs> is this important to the butterflies in any sort of specific manner? Yes, because actually the water helps to build up the humidity, you see. Oh, it helps build the humidity. Yeah. And the butterflies like this. Yes, they like very much, oh, you see. Yeah. Okay. There's beautiful flowers everywhere too. <laughs> Some of their names include the painted Jezebel, the green dragon tail, the red Helen, and the plain tiger. My money's on the paint of Jezebel. Thank you so much for showing me around this exquisite garden. Oh, yeah, lovely. Most welcome. Okay? <laughs> Thank you. The ultra-tropical forests of Penang grow the finest connoisseur durians in all of Malaysia. I'm meeting my friend Kenneth at his plantation to learn about the king of fruit and why it's been revered and cultivated since ancient times throughout Southeast Asia. It may have something to do with how easy it is to yeah, harvest. You just had to climb the tree and pick it yourself. Um, no, with durians it's actually quite peculiar. You don't go up and harvest the fruit. You actually have to wait for them to drop. When, they, when, when it's ready, when it's ripe, exactly. it'll drop on its own. Exactly. When they mature, they will drop on, on their own. Durians are notorious for their smell, which has been described as that of rotting onions. In fact, there are many places that ban durians. Buses, airplanes, western-style hotels. But the flesh is said to be delicious. Oh, it grows in pods. Yeah. Pods of the sort of, I guess you describe it as sort of a buttery creamy yeah. colored flesh yeah. so I can just take a little piece sure okay so I can just sort of wow is it ever creamy it's dense it's like butter yeah Yum. <laughs> it has a very strong flavor yeah does it taste like any food that you had before it does not it's very distinctive yeah. but the texture is incredible yeah. it's so creamy yeah. Well, thanks for the adventure. That was great. You're most welcome. <laughs> and I'm really curious to see what the chef is going to do with these. I wish him luck. <laughs> yeah, really. Hi, chef. Hi. Trump. I brought you a couple of durians, oh. but I see you have quite a collection already. Yeah. I guess I'll just add to the overall aroma of okay, your kitchen. Okay. Then. 
I'm with Chef Injun at the Terrace Cafe, and I'm here to help him transform this durian, which is quite strong smelling, but delicious tasting. And we're gonna make a dessert out of it, a spring roll. Yeah, correct? durian spring roll. Okay. Well, let's open it up. Okay. We have to find the line, line of the durian. That's correct. You can sort of see the lines of the pods, oh, can't you? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So the knife will go into, into it. Mm -hmm. So you can just sort of find a okay, line yeah. all the way around and then break it open okay with your hands yeah oh it looks gorgeous oh look at that perfect pod it's huge mm -hmm. so now for the spring rolls what are the ingredients for the spring rolls mm -hmm. i have to prepare durian puree which make out of the durian flesh okay so you make a puree yeah and what are the ingredients in the puree i don't know put in some Sugar, some sugar and some coconut milk and inside. some coconut milk along with the durian. Yeah. Now, we have the spring roll wrappers here. Mm -hmm. Are these made from rice flour or wheat flour? Rice flour. Rice flour. It's a yeah. little more crunchy, isn't it? Yeah, it's a little more delicate and crunchy. And this is the puree yeah. that we, the filling for the spring roll. Uh -huh. And this mozzarella cheese. Mozzarella cheese. Pistachio nuts. And pistachio nuts and. Egg yolk to seal the spring roll edge. And egg yolk seals the edge of the spring roll so you can roll it up yeah. and stick it together. Yeah. Perfect. So we've got our spring roll paper. Okay. Mm -hmm. Show you which one. Okay. Take a dollop of the puree. Yeah. Do you mind if I sneak in there yeah, for a little sure. taste? I'm dying to try this. Wow. Strong? It's definitely enhanced. Oh. It's strong. <laughs> okay. So putting some mozzarella cheese. A little pinch of mozzarella. Mm-hmm. Some chopped pistachio nuts. Some chopped pistachio nuts, which, which would add a lovely texture in mm -hmm. contrast with the smooth durian puree. Yeah. So, roll it up. Okay. And brush with the roll egg Roll it wall. up in a neat little roll. Yeah. Brush on the egg yolk. Yep. Still okay, it's right across the top. And then some on the edge. And on the tip. Mm. Fold it over like a little Fold over. present. Yes. Just roll it up. And roll it up. And it sticks together very easily. Yes. Perfect. So it will be a spring roll. Lovely. Spring roll. Can I have a try? One. Okay. 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 So I take a wrapper. Okay. So now, take a spoon. Is that too much? Uh-huh. Let's see. Put Maybe. it on. Like okay. that? That's enough. Okay, that's yeah. enough. All right. And some mozzarella cheese. Some mozzarella. Pistachio nuts for the crunchy texture. All right. Yeah. Now, fold it over. Now, seal the top with the egg wash and the tip. All right. Now, fold the edges like my little gift wrapped yeah. durian. Well, I think this looks pretty good. Yeah. What do you think? It's not bad for a first time. Not bad for a first time. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> That's great. Well, I guess we're ready to cook them, aren't we? Yeah, I'm going to fry it. Fry it yeah. in hot oil yeah. for how long? Probably about two minutes. Two minutes? Or until golden brown. Okay. Are you going to make some more spring rolls? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, while you do that, I'm going to go explore Penang a little bit. Okay. And then I'll see you in a bit. Oh, see you, yeah. Okay, bye. Bye. Drinking in the Temple of Supreme Bliss, up next on Panasia. No trip to Penang would be complete without visiting the majestic Kek Lok Si Temple, the largest yeah. Buddhist temple in Malaysia. My guide, Munis, explains that it represents many cultures in both design and philosophy. You can see, Sean, it's a mixture of three, uh, blend of three architecture. The blend of three different types right. of architecture. Right. Ah. And uh, the top one is actually Burmese architecture. Okay, so the top is Burmese. Yes, mm -hmm. and the middle one is actually Thai architecture. Thai through the middle, is that in the levels? In the is levels, the yes, yeah. Okay. And in the bottom one, okay, it's mm -hmm. Chinese architecture. Chinese architecture on the bottom being that octagonal base? That's right. Yeah. Interesting. Very beautiful. Very unique. Nicely done. And I guess the unifying element of this pagoda would be the fact that it's Buddhist. Yes, that's and right. And all those three countries are primarily Buddhist. Yes, that's right. And it was Wonderful. completed back in the 30s. In the 1930s. Yes. Wonderful. Mm. Nicely done.
shall we? Mm -hmm. Building started in 1890 on a beautiful forested hilltop. Inside, the temple is a maze of gardens, courts, and passages. The temple's gem is the pagoda of Rama the Sixth, also called the pagoda of 10,000 Buddhas. Really? But they're still adding on to it? Aren't yes, they? they are still adding on to it. It houses a highly valuable, breathtaking collection of alabaster and bronze Buddhas. South, east and west. North, south, and, east and west. And then the middle. And the center. And the center, actually. That's what actually it meant. Okay. Oh. This looks interesting. Yes, <laughs> here is where you make a wish actually. Okay, All I right. can make a wish. On the tiles actually. Okay. Just give your name, where you're from, mm -hmm. and uh, your wish. That's it. My and he'll write it down. Where I come from, and my wish, and he'll write it on the tile. All right, it's Sean Richards. See how that turns out. Oh, I love how my name looks in the calligraphy. It's gorgeous. Should I make my wish? Then, your wish. The wish is for happy travels. Can't go wrong with that. <laughs> what, where does the tile end up? On the roof. On the roof? That's how they, one, one of the ways of getting uh, donations. Really? Yeah. One of their main ways of accumulating donations is, right. to build, is through this process. That's right. I love it. Keklok Si means temple of supreme bliss. And now, we're heading back to the beach to a temple of culinary delights. We're back with Chef Injun at the lovely Paris Cafe restaurant, and we're ready to start preparing our main attraction, which is lobster sautéed with wild pepper leaf. All right, well, let's look through the ingredients. Okay. Okay. This chopped onion. Chopped onion. And mm -hmm. Chopped garlic. Chopped garlic. Ginger. Ginger. Julian of coffee lime leaf. Julian of coffee lime leaf, okay. Yeah. And this is Julian of wild pepper leaf. This is the wild pepper leaf? Yeah. Which you have nicely julienned. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this one is turmeric powder. Turmeric. And then sweet turnips. Sweet turnip? Yeah. I've never had sweet turnip before. Do you mind if I try a piece? Yeah, I can. <laughs> of the face? Very sweet, mm -hmm. crunchy, and lots of water. It's very watery. Yeah. Nice and fresh. Yeah. Okay. And this chopped tomato. Chopped tomato. Chili flakes. Chili flakes. Then salt. Salt. White pepper powder. White pepper. Do you prefer white pepper to black? Yeah, for local dishes, we prefer white pepper little powder. It's a little more, more subtle. Yes, so. exactly. Mm -hmm. Then this coconut cream, coconut. coconut milk. Is it cream or milk? It's thick coconut milk. We press it from... Thick coconut yeah. milk. Mm. Then this cooking oil. Cooking oil. Yes. Okay. Mm. And then, of course, That's the star of the, the, beach. Star of the dish. The lobster. <laughs> lobster. Perfect. Well, we're ready to start cooking. Yeah. So what's the first step? Okay, we put in some oil. Mm -hmm. We can put in some ginger strips and chopped garlic. Garlic and ginger? Yeah. Okay. Mm, oil's nice and hot. Mm -hmm. Okay. It smells good already. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Chop onion. Chop onion. You saute them until they become soft and translucent? Yeah, and then the will fake and the fragrance, yeah. of course. And a teaspoon of turmeric powder. A teaspoon, like that much? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. And wild pepper leaf. The wild pepper leaf. Ooh, listen to it crackle. Mm -hmm. Really fizzling. And then for the brown cafe lime leaf also. Cafe lime same leaf. Same amount. Same amount, which is also very aromatic. Lovely smell. So now we can put in the lobster. Oh, the lobster. Yeah. Can I just slide it in? Yeah, okay. There you go. So now we can add in the coconut milk. Oh, the coconut milk? Yeah. Okay. Just tell me how much. Okay, we can pour it. Mm. How's the smell? Heavenly. Yeah. Then now we can put in the sweet turnip. Sweet turnip, okay. Yeah. And some chopped tomatoes. Chopped tomato. Yeah, I believe. And followed by the chili flakes. Chili flakes? Yeah. This one have to be careful, it's very spicy. Salt and, and pepper? Salt and pepper. Okay. okay I'll finish. let you do that. Okay. And white pepper, which I believe it's not as strong as black pepper. It's a little yeah, mild. No, no. Is it ready? Yeah, it's ready. Well, if it's ready, I'm ready too. 
put some coffee lime leaf, mm -hmm. wild pepper leaf. Some wild pepper leaf, mm -hmm. which you can have fresh or cooked. Yeah, some chopped tomato. Mm -hmm. A little bit of tomato. It's a nice compliment with the red of the yeah, lobster. Yeah, and actually some chili mm -hmm. on top. What a presentation, and it smells just as good as it looks. Seafood by the seashore, up next on Panasia. Outside at the gorgeous terrace restaurant by the sea, Munis, Mr. Chin, and Chef Injin have joined me for food, drink, and conversation about food and drink. Would you like to add some more spice to your lobster? Or? Okay, no problem. This is good. Yeah. Very good. You can substitute with fish, prawns, even crabs also you can substitute. Even crab? Yeah. Oh, that would be good too, mm -hmm. wouldn't it? Do you like all sorts of seafood? Yes, most of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Substitute? You actually can substitute with basil leaf. Oh, basil leaf? Yes. Okay. A very different flavor, mm -hmm. but yeah. it would still be lovely. Lovely yes. compliment with the kaffir lime leaf and the coconut. It goes very nicely, doesn't it? Yes, indeed. Mm-hmm. Whether you substitute the ingredients with prawns or basil or stick to the original, this is fabulous. Here are the recipes. For the stir fry, boil the lobster with ginger for 10 minutes. Remove it from its shell and slice into medallions. Saute garlic, onions, and ginger in oil. Add turmeric, pepper, and lime leaf, and the lobster. Cube the turnips and stir in the coconut milk. Add tomato and chili flakes. Stir for one minute and serve. For the durian spring rolls, cook pureed durian until thickened. Add sugar, coconut milk, salt, and five spice powder. Spoon cooled puree into a spring roll crepe with mozzarella and pistachios. Roll and seal by brushing with egg yolk. Deep fry until golden brown. Drain on a paper towel and serve hot. Before. This is my first time. First one. Mm. Yeah. 